But nowadays, somebody, cousin, sister, daughter, brother, play on the radio. So anything goes. We don't have any make it or break it. We don't have any kind of thing that artists have to strive for it to be. Yeah. It's just hype, you know? All you gotta do is take off your clothes and walk naked and you're the artist, artist. Like, that's bullshit. Yeah, yeah man, a boom shot, man, <laughs> and a boom shot. Watch out, boom shot. You're telling him to tell us to make the way to Merman now. So this one is a short shot. If you can't boom shot. Boom shot. So, on the quick thing, legendary penthouse studio sitting here with Singy yeah. Singy Taurus, Taurus Riley. Riley. Yes. I mean, just the just the name Singy Singy. As soon as you say that, yeah. I mean, Singy is some you know a person you call who sings. But yeah. when you say Singy Singy, everybody yeah. knows it's Taurus, Taurus Riley. Yes, yes. So you have carved out a real dent in the scene. Wow, that's you know? good. That's what I want to do. I really want to stamping my foot in the music business and inspire other youths because I was inspired by artists. So you know, people like Sisla Kalanji, Great Bojo Bantan, Bounty Killer, them man they inspire me really because you know about Ars Riley, my father's a musician. Yes. So I was around music from my born and growing up music. I must say people like Barry Salmon and Freddie McGregor and you know, Gregory Isaac come to my house and Dennis Brown come to my house. But that time I never really you know, I, I know them do music, I mean, like it, but it wasn't really like my thing. It was like grown folks thing. Really? I so you didn't see yourself as that's nah, what you're doing? I didn't even like it. I was ah. like, sure, you're making so much noise. And you're like a big man, them, and, you know, I couldn't know that it was good, but it wasn't my thing. Mm -hmm. So then, guess what? Go on now. It's like, when me call the artists before me, a bound to kill a bunch of band. That's what the music was me and my age group of people are listening to. Because he's a dance hall baby. But me have reggae roots, me have rock steady yes. roots, me have all of these different roots. You know what I mean? And but we listen to dance, we listen to hip hop, we listen to Tupac and Biggie, Bunty and Beanie. So, you know, that is the whole kind of thing where you get so much different variety out of my music. Right. So when me say more stamp it, those people really make me want to do music like for real now. Mm. You know what I mean? They inspire me. I mean, never hide and talk it yet. When me hear Shabarangs and Supercat, I say, yo, this is <laughs> it. Like, you know what I mean? And then when me say Buju, them go, I say, wow. You know what I mean? And that is what I want to be to the youth, them. I mean, real, 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 real. I remember personally myself when I heard um, the big song that, I mean, you've been doing music, yeah. like you said, for a long time, but the big song internationally was She's Royal. And yeah. of course, that touched. I mean, every girl stood up and was, you know, she thought that you were singing about her. You yeah, know? that's cool. So, you know, that is a real girl song, but also, you know, it has such a great meaning. Yes. So I think it does so much more than just penetrate women. It just is a whole new thing of respect, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, we could say it like this. You penetrate woman, you know, but it's just the way how you do it. So it's like, I don't, it's not, it wasn't a physical thing. You know, it's like a penetrate the mind. Mm -hmm. So she's royal is a love song, was a cultural love song. Mm -hmm. So and it was on an album, Parables, that was really like a breakthrough album because I have like Stay With You, Beware, Lion Pa, She's Royal. You know, it's a, a popular album. Mm -hmm. And that made Tarsha the music more popular. And before that we had an album called Challenges. It was really popular here in Jamaica. Barba Cheer, Larger Than Life and those kind of songs. And at that time, I think it's safe to say, probably me and Dwayne Stevenson, an expression of mine at the time, Lavasca, were like the only youths trying to do like, a different kind exactly. of music. Not different from the culture, because it's reggae, but I mean, we were bringing back original progressions. Right. So it wasn't like a rhythm thing, jump on a rhythm thing, and you know, we wanted to make music from scratch. Yeah. And that's what we were trying our best to do it, you know? And so. That's you have a new sound, sorry babes. No, like you have a new sound, you have a new voice, you have a new it's so just so new, so a lot of people never understand it. Exactly. And I remember when I heard the song, I really imagined I heard the song before I saw the yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. So I really imagined the person to be older. Yeah, a lot of people think I'm older. A lot older of people think then no. when I'm when and then seeing you it's like you're saying no one of that no one that youthful was doing that sound and yeah. I know right now whether you want to call it a Roots revival yeah, yeah. or whatever people have their own names for it and I know that Roots culture thing is happening more within the 
young you, generation, but at the time you were doing it, it was it one was, of a kind. Yeah, and it was, and, and they have something now that I'm really happy that we didn't have. They have more people doing it. So, you know, like I could even tell about concerts. When we used to go into concerts with me, you know, Black Style Band, we'd be the only band change for the night. And the promoters used to cuss about it. When we'd go to tour and fire, when we'd go fire on tour and carrying musicians, with percussion and the whole They're thing. They're not used to it. They them just... start saying, oh, you're carrying so much people. Mm -hmm. But that is how we burn and grow the music supposed to be. Right. So, I mean, we get the praises and we also suffer for the integrity of the music. We try to uphold it. Ask any promoter in Jamaica, ask any promoter international, four years ago, five years ago, if Tara Shiley would come there without his band. Mm -hmm. Never. And I still don't switch. I never leave them because I have a particular sound we are dealing with and because we're preserving the integrity of the music. As I was talking to Big Brother Boom Shots, you know, even Rebel Salute, I was telling him and I was saying on the stage, Jamaican music was not a music built on hype. Mm -hmm. And even if there was hype, you'd have to defend your hype. So if you check it in any genre, check dance art, the wickedest thing, Super Cat, Ninja Man, them hype, but them can defend it when they come to lyrics yep. time. But now we notice that you have so much hype and still people not doing it right. And I'm not here to fight against no artists. I'm just saying, what happened to the quality and the substance? What do you think is the real fundamental issue? There? We're rushing too much to get to the top or what we think is the top. We don't have any more apprenticeship. We get things too easy. And it's good and it's bad because, yeah, it's digital age, so a man can just go boom, bam, bam, and click it mm -hmm. on them thing, and then it show up on the TV and show. But I mean, you had to be ready to go into the studio. I had to be ready. Mm -hmm. Not because my father's Jimmy Riley. I used to get it rough because, I guess what now? People used to say, you think because your father's Jimmy Riley, mm -hmm. going to come in here and do what you want? I had to I'm write sure. and practice. McDean tell you, we had to I rehearse before me record a song. Me write the song, write the song, write the song, and then we go to the studio and we put in effort, you know? And sometimes I feel like the people, Anya, them deal with the music like a joke thing. I mean, I understand a man have to live. You know, so maybe that is his way to eat his food. But I mean, when you eat your food and your belly full, it would be nice to know that you're eating good food mm -hmm. and you're getting the food the right way. Right. That's what I think, you know what I mean? So, I don't really talk about these things a lot, but then, we really have a passion for the music. And this is the only thing I've ever done in my whole life. I once again my born and grow into music. So this is something that me really take seriously. Yeah. It is something that me take sometimes me take it too seriously. But I mean, that is what it is. But you're really I mean, if there were artists that didn't take it seriously, people wouldn't you know, there is a risk. I'm not saying of the music being extinct, but that's what happens if you don't preserve yeah. it. Yeah, then Jamaica them say, what stay too long, serve another man. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I mean, reggae music is beautiful. And I think Bob Marley said one time in an interview, I mean, I agree. Reggae music is done in Jamaica by Jamaicans from Jamaica, but all over the world, as with a reason, people are gravitating to it. You have reggae tan over there, you have different kind of styles, you have, you know, American reggae bands, you have different kind of Japanese reggae bands, you have only people dealing with reggae. So, it hurt my heart to know that the homeland of reggae is not dealing yeah. with it with the same kind of zeal, with the same kind of professionalism, with the same kind of enthusiasm. You know what I mean? The whole vibes. We need that. You know, and some of them are reasons behind our control, and some of them are not. Had but we don't want reasons. We want to deal with things. Just deal with it. Yeah, yeah. man. I mean, you mentioned American reggae bands, and we yeah. were just covering um, the Jamaica Jazz Festival, and they had two big white reggae bands, yeah. Magic, who is more a pop but use yeah. reggae influence, and Soja, who are very reggae and, you know, yeah. and, and in fact have gone on to be nominated for Grammys. Grammys yeah. How does it make you feel when you see the music gone to that extent? Because that's, that's not, that that was their fir both bands' first performance in Jamaica. In Jamaica. Yeah, well, they just show you how powerful Jamaican culture is, that it can reach across the world, you know? Reggae music is from the ghetto. My father come from Jonestown, you know. Ghetto youth. The man they know how the music come from the roots. Mm. And to know that it starts from a little seed, a mustard seed, and become this big blossom, it's actually very much a compliment. The only thing is that we want Jamaica people to be a part of it because it is indigenous to Jamaica. So, you know, that is what we really, really want. 
I don't have a problem with international acts doing it because once again, that is what, how good things happen. It's like, you know, a new style of dressing. If jeans are in, in the world, <laughs> they're in the world everywhere. Everybody have on right, jeans. Right, exactly. That means that just shows how good it is. It's such a compliment to the Definitely. genre. But at the same time... We just need to know what we're dealing with because guess what now? The Grammys is a situation and a setup, you know. There's a Grammy society. There's a way and means how to do it. And, you know, with intelligence and the right infrastructure, we can know how to be a part of these things. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. We want to know how to join these societies and how to be, even have a vice, even have a chance. The next thing that I really like Jamaica people for support their own because a lot of times they don't do that. Really? Yeah. I don't know if it's on purpose or I don't know what it is, but... If you look, when the part of time them have this bedroom, when they have this Yahoo, and put out that thing, million. Right. If every Jamaican support every Jamaican artist, everybody sell million. Yeah. You know what I mean? You look at it, in New York alone, how much million people, Jamaica full it up. In yeah. Miami, Jamaica full it up. In Jamaica here, if we buy our artist things, remember we the one who come to the concerts. That's right. So imagine if we support our artists. So what do you think the reason is for that? But we don't really want reasons, because reasons are excuses. We just want solutions. Mm -hmm. So we just want to, you know, hopefully who's watching this, Jamaicans, support the Jamaican artists, you know what I mean? Because we do have a treasure. You know, we have a big treasure. This yeah. is like diamond and gold. Exactly. I mean, yeah, man. 